Hello YouTube and welcome back. <clears throat> Today is a beautiful day in April. It's uh, still coronavirus time, but uh, I'm allowed to uh, be outside to do some maintenance on Max. So that's the plan uh, for the day. I have a long list of things to do. Um, the first thing I plan to do today is to show how to change the motor oil, which is something pretty straightforward. A um, few things and bits and pieces about that. And then I would like to uh, change the suspension oil as well, if I have the oil, which I don't know yet. But anyway, I will drain out the uh, motor oil and I will show you what I'm using for this kind of operation. And then uh, if uh, time allows and I'm in the mood, I will uh, show you the other things I, uh, I've done and what I'm going to do. See you soon. Okay, Max is here, he's ready, he's in the right position. I have my material uh, setting up and um, well, I'm just going to uh, unscrew the bolt, which is, uh, what is it, oh, there it is. I let the engine run for a while because I want the oil to be, uh, to be warm in order to flow it, uh, to flow better out and then um, so I will have to be a bit careful about that and then I will uh, just uh, let it flow out and and change the filter and refill it. There you go. Key is a 17. Um, just uh, take out the bolt there. Watch it because there is also um, a ring. How do you call it? Um, another component. Rivet, ring. Whatever. There is a seal that is together with that and normally falls into the oil. So you have absolutely to uh, reassemble this stuff um, with, the, with the ring on. So if you, if you miss it, the, uh, you will have uh, oil leaks. There's not much oil into it, it's quite dirty. I will show you later what I mean. Okay, so the oil has been discarded and as you see there, that's the ring I was talking about. That invariably falls into the container as soon as you unscrew the, uh, the bolt of the oil. If you, if you are not careful, you will reinstall the bolt like that without that ring, without that seal. That is guaranteed to be a disaster. So now I will uh, take it off again, put the seal back and tighten it. Other thing in terms of preparation, you, when you do this job, you have to have uh, an empty bottle that you can use and you have to have this kind of thing to be able to put the oil there. It's not difficult, but there are all things that you have to think about. So container, that thing, funnel, an empty bottle, which is, that is a bottle that is one and a half liter and it is basically full. So you have to uh, do all these kind of things correctly. So this is the way the, um, the bolt and the seal looks like they have to go together. So don't miss it absolutely because it's going to be a major problem. Besides, once you have changed the oil, <clears throat> you should check for leakage anyway. Uh, a single drop is enough, in my opinion, to uh, think about doing it again, because single drop uh, leaking out means that after a while your uh, oil tank will uh, go empty and your engine will be fried. So that's an easy one. Okay, let's reinstall the bolt. Okay, we have finished to reinstall the bolt. Uh, with the seal, so that side is okay. Now it's time for the oil filter. The oil filter is um, here below. Three small bolts, I don't remember, I think a 10, but I will tell you later. So I will uh, disassemble that. One thing that you must remember, there is quite some oil there. So you have to put your container underneath it when you go for the oil filter, because there will be some spillage otherwise. So, uh, take care about that. As you can see, now it's almost over, but uh, there was uh, quite some oil there. 
so we are going to wait for a while and then we are going to uh, completely open it and I will show you here you go these are the uh, three screws the cover and that's the old oil filter please note the oil filter is not symmetric there is a part that needs to go outside and a part that needs to go uh, inside so I will show you in a while how it does look but just leave it uh, leaking for a while one thing that you have to consider when you do this job uh, you are very very close to the exhaust so if the engine is hot the exhaust will be hot and you need to take extra precaution in order not to get um, to get burnt so just leave it there for a while and let's see what happens okay this is the new oil filter this is how it looks like this is the part that needs to go outside this is the part that needs to go inside so you have to stick it like this this is the box so this is what I bought for this it is not very expensive all right so there you go okay beauty of life shows this is the old oil filter which looks a bit like this I think most of what is inside here is carbon residuals I don't expect there to be much metal or hard parts simply you know all becomes dirty because of carbon residuals more than anything else especially after a while all the wearing that needs to be done in the breaking period is done already with Max by a long time so there you go so I put in the new one clean up a bit this mess and I'll be back to you okay so the cover has been reinstalled three bolts back you cannot really install it in the wrong way because you have to write seam uh, like that so you cannot really miss it the key by the way is an 8 number 8 focus yes there you go it's an 8 for these three bolts so a 17 for the uh, for the main bolt of the oil on the other side this is um, this is an 8 17 8 and then you need the bucket like this one and then uh, well we're practically ready here the uh, this is open so I'm going to find some oil and I will throw some oil into this uh, beautiful motorcycle motor scooter whatever and then we're gonna run it for a while and then we are gonna adjust it um, I want to tell you something about something else but I don't remember what well come back to my mind just a second so let's talk about motor oil I've been riding cars and motor motorcycles and scooters and stuff for uh, let me see 30 years more than 30 years and I read a lot about the differences between oils and between lubrificants and all this kind of stuff so my conclusion is that eventually what is really important is to have fresh oil and to have the right type of oil into the engine now these three uh, bottles are all remainings of oil I used for other things they are all tin W40 all of them uh, for um, um, four strokes engine there are three different brands but I personally don't believe 
the use of three brands of the same motor oil makes any difference. And on the basis of the experience I made in the past, I never found a single time where mixing the same kind of oil from three different brands makes any difference. Um, this is my personal experience. So I have a remaining of the Castrol, I have a remaining of the Motor Road, which is I think something I bought at the uh, motorcycle shop, specifically for motorcycles, blah, blah, blah. And then I have that uh, Total Quartz, which I'm not even sure it is for motorcycles. Because the um, circuit of the engine and the circuits of the transmissions are different here. There is an automatic transmission, it is not uh, feeding on the oil of the engine as some motorcycles do. It's a mixed, mixed lubrification system, but Max doesn't have it. Max has oil for the engine and oil for the transmission. They are, these are completely two different circuits. Um, I think any motor oil that has the right characteristics in this case, the 10W40 uh, will perfectly do for Max, irrespective of the brand. So what I'm going to do is to fill the, um, practically empty the, the bottles into the engine up to the right level, let it run for a while, check it and so on. Now, I don't want to start a discussion about this. I'm not saying this is the right thing to do, but I'm just saying that is what I have been doing for more than 30 years on all my vehicles and there has not been a single time where my engine suffered because I was using the same kind of oil coming from three different brands. Anyway, see you back. Now on the subject of refilling oil in Max, the entry point is a bit uncomfortable uh, because it is basically buried into a small area in the chassis so it's, it's very difficult to find the bottle which has the right kind of, um, yeah, of, of, of funnel, let's put it in this way. So I built one, and the way I built it is just taking this kind of concoction here, which I find in a shop, which is far too big, and I just added the tip of a silicon um, bottle. You know the things that you add to the silicon bottles when you, when you do your job? You just take one, uh, you sew it at measure, you clamp it with one of these things. This is the first time I'm using it, so I'm very curious how it goes. So this goes into Max like this, and here I will put my red funnel after I clean it. Let's see how it goes. So as you remember, I used this funnel for the for discarding the old oil in the bottle, it's the same funnel, so I need to clean it, and the way I'm cleaning it is just like this. I pass this, uh, this piece of um, workplace paper into it, I wipe out the residuals, and I use it for the clean oil. Okay, so it worked very well. Um, the concoction I created is, uh, is quite effective, I'm very happy with that, there is practically no oil spill. I got the oil at the right level. Now you have to consider when you do this job, um, the filter, the oil filter is empty. So you have to account for that um, extra oil that you might need. But when you put it at the right level, like this, and, um, and then you run it for a while and you see and you see where it goes. But this looks good. The other thing you have to do, I think, is to clean very carefully this area here. So if there is an oil spill, you will see it immediately. And also, <coughs> you have to clean very carefully the bolt there. So wipe it clean before you do this job after you installed it, so you know... I don't focus it. There you go. Uh, so you know that if there is a noise spill, you will see it immediately. Um, 
So having done this, I think it's time to run the engine for a while and then to check again the oil. And when we are happy with the result, we just uh, clean up this mess. So Max is running. Engine oil is at the right level. Don't see any sweat in there. And that's also clean. So I think we succeeded. Let's switch off the engine and let's see how much oil we actually ended up with. Oil should be now at temperature. So, uh, let's see how this goes. Okay. Alright, well I could put a few, few drops more. But... I think I will, I will leave it like this forever. Yeah, sorry for the moment. I'm reasonably happy with that. It doesn't need to be at the very, very top of it, and too much oil is also not good. Not good. So I will leave it like this, and I will check it maybe in uh, one week or two weeks or something like that to see if I need a refill. Okay, so this is it now the next challenge, which is the transmission oil. ta -da. So, every, every other oil change, uh, engine oil, you need to replace the transmission oil. Transmission oil is a separate circuit, as I told you before, versus the engine oil, and basically lubricates everything that is there, in this area. These are a couple of uh, wheels that needs to be lubricated and that actually move, transform the um, engine power into wheel power. And that is um, a couple of wheels which are in here. There is a video of a Russian guy who has been uh, taking that apart. And you will see it's a relatively small container for the oil. And um, but that oil, the transmission oil, must be replaced every something like 12,000 kilometers maximum, whereby the engine oil must be replaced every 6,000 kilometers maximum. So you can replace it every single time, but what I normally do is uh, remember to replace it um, every other engine oil change. So, um, how does it work? Let's see if I can see that with it for you. Right, it's just... It's just there. Let me see if I can get it for you. Uh, holy cow. I think that's it. Boys, this is difficult. Where well, that is it? It's not that one. I think it's that one. Sticks out. Ah! Finally. This is it. That's the transmission oil bolt. Okay, so we will unscrew it. The transmission oil is very, very thick and you need 300 milliliters of it every change. So we will loosen that bolt, we'll collect the oil and then we'll put new oil in. This is a very lengthy procedure because the oil is so thick it uh, takes some time to get uh, in and out. So 
yourself you go uh, that bolt has been taken out the bolt under has been taken out they're both 14 and this is the transmission oil slowly getting out again it's a very very thick oil very dense and it takes its time to uh, get out and also to get in so we will just leave it there and in the meantime we are going to talk about how to refill this bloody thing because as you can see the, the uh, hole that is um, that is used to refill the oil is almost parallel to the ground so you need something that forces the oil to get in and that's why I use this concoction here which is an oil bottle and the idea is that I'm going to put this element inside the hole and I will keep this upside down like this in order to get the oil down the thing is that um, the bottle goes vacuum so it takes hours before the oil in the bottle goes into the place where it needs to be so I want to do something about it and um, and I'm going to make an experiment which is one of my crazy ideas let's see if it works I'll show you later what it is so guys this is uh, the oil bottle and what I did is to make a small hole there which I will tape or will close just with my finger and the idea is that this small hole will avoid that the uh, bottle goes vacuum while I um, refill the oil into the transmission uh, box. Um, in the meantime, I discovered that I do not have any transmission oil left, so I will need to buy some. And then I will try this concoction and see if it works. I'll see you in a while. So I, I bowled 350cc in the bottle. It is now hanging up. And it goes real slow it will take hours before it fills in so what I will do I will uh, try not to make a mess and I will try to open this piece of tape free the hole and see if I can get a better flow so now the hole is open there you go if I can focus it yeah there you go so this is the kind of flow I'm getting, it's really slow, it will take a long time before um, it fills in, I really can have a walk easily in the meantime, but it's not leaking, so yeah it will take at least half an hour, possibly more, but at least I don't need to be here and watch this stuff or to hold it, just hold itself and uh, it will take its time all right while the uh, while the in EV works very slowly very slowly and the oil goes uh, slowly into the uh, transmission I will explain you something else um, what I've been doing is to challenge the uh, replacement of the cooling liquid now if you look at the of the youtuber the Russian youtuber he does the replacement of the cooling liquid which is uh, suggested by the maintenance manual um, the only challenge with that is that in order to replace the cooling liquid you have basically to take out a couple of panels messing around with uh, tubes pipes um, making sure that the circuit doesn't run empty and a lot of other stuff I was not comfortable with doing that so I took um, kind of advice from another youtuber an American who is um, who is uh, making who is having a channel about uh, cars 
And he explained that in order to replace or refresh the cooling liquid, you can simply um, siphon out the cooling liquid, which is into the reserve tank, which is uh, under here. I don't want to touch it now, but if you remove this panel, you will find the underneath the um, container where you can refill the uh, cooling liquid. Now, if I siphon out with this tube here what is in the what is in the uh, in the reserve bottle in the reserve container and I add um, cooling liquid to it fresh one and if I do it say every two or three months I just empty that stuff as much as I can I replace the uh, cooling liquid with fresh one and eventually I get a continuous refreshment of cooling liquid in this way it is quite easy because the only thing you need is this which is a small pipe it can also be a bit thicker but I wasn't sure so I I took a relatively uh, small one in diameter and you just uh, you know use the container I used for the oil and you just uh, dump everything you can from that container into the uh, from the reserve into the container into the bucket and then you just uh, add fresh liquid and then if you want you can have a ride and do it again and after a while your cooling liquid will be as fresh as it gets nice huh? so this is going to take forever i tightened the um, tube to the motorcycle so that if it starts to uh, if the wind picks up uh, i will not create an ecological disaster here so that's going not going nowhere this is slowly getting in um, yeah I think it will take a very long time so I will do something else because in the meantime uh, I can do something else I don't need to be here so I'll clean up this mess put away this stuff I'm done with it this is the oil I'm using off we go All right, guys and girls, this, are, uh, this is what I'm doing now. Um, the uh, maintenance schedule of Max says that I should be changing the spark plug. So what I've been doing is to dig myself into the changing of the spark plug, which has been adventurous. Anyway, so starting from the scratch you need to take out the saddle and the saddle you need to free it from this one and then you have to take this to free like this it's just the pin it's very easy and you're done there then you have to take out this element here which is the central cover now this is a bit of a pain because because it's all plastic and if you know how to do it it's not difficult but basically you have to free them here there and There, that hole. There are three screws keeping this piece in place. You have to uncap the um, the tank, and you have to pull it backwards. When you pull it backwards, these teeth will jump out of their seat, and these are straight teeth which are just getting in. It is not exactly what I would do every day, but but this is what I need to do. So this is um, is not too hard, but it is also not the easiest thing. So remember to take out the stuff. You need to unscrew that one, this one, and that one. 
and then you pull it towards you and it pops out. Then you have to take out this one, which is what you see when you open the saddle and it is normally staying like this just on top of it so it is uh, one two and one two and three then one four and you have also two bolts here and here and it pops up like this this is easy then you finally see the head of the engine of Max. It looks like this. So this is the fuel tank, which can be cleaned up a bit. So that's the head. And the spark plug is... I don't know if you can see that. Is there. See? So zooming out. It's a very strange position. This is the uh, power cable. And there is a, a pipe which is absolutely in the way. And this is normally staying here. So I took it out because it was horribly in the way. I took it out, I parked it on the side, I took this out, just pulling it, and then you will need some kind of uh, some kind of tool like this one. The spark plugs are these, so are small feet. So a car, a car tool will not will not do. This is the old one. Made quite some miles. Not completely sure it was up for replacement, but and this is the new one. The gap should be between six and seven millimeters, so I put it at six point five. I just finished to set it up. And then it's just a question of dropping this baby back in its place. Uh, it's definitely not something. Oh, there you go. It's not, definitely not something you can do in the dark. Oh, okay. There you are. Not easy, guys. Uh, yes, that's the place where this stuff should be going. So let's get moving. Let's see what I can do. So let's recap. Um, I changed the motor oil. I changed the oil filter, which are the most critical things to do. And uh, they are both good. Let's see if it is not leaking. A little bit of sweat. But I think I can live with that. Um, then I changed the... Oh, by the way. Oh, look at this. That was perfect. So I changed the uh, um, spark plug, which was a bit an adventure. This piece here is a, is a bit of a pain and this part plug is not easily accessible so it's a bit of a work but never mind did that I refreshed the part of the cooling liquid with this one now I'm changing the final transmission oil with this concoction um, I could give a look to the air filter which is there but since the engine is not backfiring, 
and it's running smoothly I will not touch it because that is also a bit of a pain to um, to manage I mean the this thing is very hard to take out and the air filter which I don't have a spare part at the moment but um, uh, the air filter must be mounted again in a kind of uh, strange structure made of rubber very tight it's a bit of a pain so I will not touch that for the moment because I don't think there is a need for that and the other thing I would like to do is to check the brakes to check the brakes I need to study a bit more but I especially need a key to loosen these babies which I don't think I have because it's a big key I don't have it so I will need to um, I will need to get one first of all and secondly I will need to study how to do this job properly I think it's possible this brake which should be the front brake is the right front brake is uh, has been quite used I mean I'm doing a lot of highway so braking is not really something that I do 100 times a day and besides uh, Max has a very good engine brake so really the amount of braking you're doing on this motor scooter is uh, is quite limited um, but this has now traveling 22,500 kilometers something like that it's still the original one um, the disc is all right I don't see anything strange, but I want to check it anyway. And then I want to check, for the sake of it, uh, the left front brake, which should be a part of the combined braking. This one, which I expect to be practically new. And then the rear brake. And the rear brake is another pain and uh, let's see what it is the rear brake is this one and I suspect that in order to do this properly I will probably need to do some work yeah I think I will need to do some particular work here I don't think it's an easy one but um, yeah I would like to check that too and then uh, yeah but I need the key so so let's give a look to the kilometer if I succeed to get this stuff to focus because it's sunny so it's not an easy one there you go 22,772 kilometers not bad not bad at all it remains a fantastic piece of equipment and uh, I'm extremely happy with this so looking at the paint well now it's particularly dirty but the paint is holding all right saddle is still fine um, it rides very well Maintenance, well, you can see it by yourself. I mean, I'm doing basically everything by myself. The only thing I will need assistance is to replace the tires, which are still good. Because if I look at the front tires, and yeah, I found a tag, which is, let me see if I can focus it, where is it, it is here. I don't know if you can see it that's a tag and that tag um, as long as it is under the profile means that the tire can still go for some time so no need for replacing the tires and they're looking good not damaged or something and then uh, oh, let's switch this stuff off okay. And if I'm going to the real tire, and if I'm looking for a tag, uh, let's see. I think this is one. 
that's it. Yeah, that's it back. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just very close to that white thing. It's almost impossible to see it. But I mean, the, the tires are fine. Are absolutely fine. There is nothing wrong with those. And there is uh, plenty of profile left. So this will uh, hold, I think, at least another year. So happy with that. Um, yeah, for the rest, uh, I mean, <coughs> there are some little rust signs on the exhaust. Take into account, this is a uh, Maxis never covered. I mean, I just leave it as you see it for winter, summer, springtime, rain, cold, wind, whatever. So, yeah, it's. Uh, it's really holding up very well. I need to clean it up a bit because I see here a lot of grease spots and rubbish. So, yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a fantastic machine here, guys. For the money, it's really good. And, um, and I'm very happy with that. There is another thing that I wanted to tell you, but I always forget to tell you. It's about the saddle. Now, the saddle, as you can see, has this form. And this saddle is particularly smart, because it accommodates people who are really short, like myself. I'm 165. And I can flatfoot this uh, scooter simply because this wide part of the saddle here is where I'm sitting when I'm riding, but as soon as I need to stop, I can really put my backside here, and because it is so small, I can flat foot and get here and flat foot there. So it's quite all right. It's very smart. Uh, somebody which even shorter than 165 can um, ride. Uh, a Maxim 600 like this one with very little concern. So it's very user friendly and uh, very easy. Very, very easy. All right, so I think I told you before, but um, I was hearing a lot of squeaking. Um, and I spent quite some time trying to figure out where it was coming from. When I was riding, when I was sitting on it, when I was moving the scooter, I mean, it was squeaking and I thought it was um, where the rear sus suspensions but it was actually this piece what you see in the picture and that piece is actually belonging to this stuff so this is basically the place where um, when the center stand is up it goes, let's see, I hope you can see it, but it goes here. And um, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Oh, well, somewhere there. And um, <coughs> unfortunately, this thing gets dry after a while because the grease get washed away and uh, so after a while it's time to regrease it what i will do so it goes um, this is the back side so it goes like this this is the front size this must be on top of this like that and oops and this is used to close the whole lot you have to bend the extremities back around the thing so it becomes a kind of mm, like this so it doesn't move so i will regrease this thing and uh, i will put it back i'll give it a bit of a clean 
W40, what I used, doesn't last very long, so since I have some some engine grease, I will use it for this purpose as well, and hopefully it will stay good for some time. So I cleaned it up a bit, just with a piece of uh, clothing, and this is how it is. Meanwhile, I discovered that there are two washers, not one. So, uh, and I think these are actually those who are squeaking, because uh, one of these is to go first, so it is metal to metal, then this one goes in, and then on the top of this, that one. So it is washer, this one, washer. And I think what is really squeaking is the metal to metal component. So I will uh, grease everything up as, as, as much as I can, clean it up, reinstall it, and let's see what happens. I'm pretty sure this thing here will be an absolute nightmare to be put back. But hey, somebody got to do it. So this is the complete system. This goes against the um, underbelly of uh, Max, and it avoids that the center stand goes gadang, gadang, gadang against, uh, against the underbelly. Then um, you have this, which goes around the metal component and which sits here in and that's metal to metal and then these two are metal to metal so I grease everything up and we reinstall it okay this has been uh, greased and reinstalled a bit cleaned up it's not exactly you know a beauty context winner I will adjust it a bit later just to make it uh, looking a bit more nice but functionally this is the way it is supposed to be and that will not go nowhere guaranteed so yeah I will adjust it a bit um, I need another kind of plier but um, this will be squeakless for any foreseeable time very easy actually it's just a bit of an uncomfortable position to work with because i'm practically laying on the ground in order to access this uh, this piece but never mind you know it's part of the challenge now the next thing i want to do is to clean up uh where is it oh man it's difficult to focus oh there you are I need to empty that thing, I need a bit of a container to collect whatever comes out of it. This is also part of normal maintenance, you need to do it, so now and then there is not so much into it, I think, but um, you need to clean it up. This is the um, crankcase exhaust, so all the rubbish that is um, accumulating in the crankcase uh, becomes a kind of vapor and then it condensates into this... Uh, into this tube and uh, needs to be needs to be cleaned up needs to be emptied so this is what i will do next so open it with the plier just have to pull that um, uh, what is it pull that metal lock up pull the tap down and this is what comes out of it stinks quite intensely it's a kind of uh, paint smell but it is uh, yeah it's quite nasty it's quite nasty stuff so i'll just uh, leave it drip for a while this is uh, another one of the list pretty happy with this perfect and i will remember to uh, put it back how it should be Let's see how it goes with the transmission. Because the whole point of this work is that, meanwhile, we are still waiting that this baby, okay, this is still in its place and this is slowly going down. But it was, uh, yeah, it is working, so 
it's very very slow this probably in hindsight probably this is the first thing that I should have done because while this is um, this is refilling I would have had all the time of the world to change the engine oil to change the filter and so on the only thing that uh, I will need to do next time I do this is to make sure this uh, bottle is very well secure and that that tube doesn't go nowhere so it really needs to be in the right place and uh, so if I move max it doesn't uh, it doesn't pop out or something because that's not the idea but you know this is uh, going really well let's go to see on the other side ah look at this this is a better view of the rubbish that is coming out of the um, of the crankcase exhaust really nasty stuff uh, let's see this baby yeah this baby needs to be done better because I see you see the uh, clip is not completely in so that means that um, I think it could hit the under part of the chassis and causing some noise I'll test it if I need if I need I will um, I will do this but basically this roll this roll here ends up here in this area and it um, is lights it slides every time you get a bump or the um, the suspension suppressed or whatever um, so it uh, if it is dry it is uh, without oil it makes a lot of noise this is by the way the oil tab which is pretty dry very good so yeah I wanted to buy the scooter because I can do practically everything by myself and I can say it is full success for what that matters really full success the amount of money you can save well you will save if you do this uh, kind of simple activities by yourself is unbelievable I reckon that I would be looking at um, between work and components i would be looking at uh, close to 1000 euro per year with this kind of uh, this kind of work you know if it is not 1000 it's probably seven eight hundred but still there so i'm shooting this uh, video while i'm uh, performing some maintenance on, uh, on max but i will tell you a bit uh, what was the mental process that led me to uh, buy this so the very first requirement I was having and the biggest grief I was having uh, before having max was the need to change gears now you can say of course motorcycle is all about the fun of changing gears and I totally agree with that um, to change gears and to switch gears and to you know pump the engine and to um, have the ability to ride uh, in a sporty way it's absolutely part of the fun involved in having a motorcycle but thing is it's a lot of fun as long as you are not in a in traffic you are not in the middle of the city and you have to switch between first neutral first neutral second first neutral first second first neutral I mean it's a pain and um, so shifting gears is fun when uh, I was let's say uh, going out for recreational purposes I was going on some twisty road and I was enjoying myself immensely but when I had to use my motorcycle as a mean of transportation particularly in traffic was really tiring and it was a bit frustrating so I want to have something automatic and I consider the Honda um, which has an automatic model and I think another one, but I don't remember which one. 
However, when looking at motorcycles, I noticed two things. Well, a number of things. Um, the first one is that uh, motorcycles tend to be quite expensive. And secondly, that motorcycles have, uh, even when they are automatic, they don't have the storage uh, capacity I was really interested in. And Max has tons of it. I told you in uh, previous videos, I just wanted to have something easy to move around and to store and to bring with me basically whatever I want, which is not too long or too heavy. But for instance, for shopping as a placement for a car, I wanted to have something like that. Now, you can get it from a motorcycle. As I did, I was having a Kawasaki Vulcan uh, 500, very old model, I think it was 20 years old. And I added some bags um, uh, on the rear side. Very nice looking, but the bags were small um, and uh, it was very difficult to do shopping with those and they were breaking and a lot of stuff so uh, automatic and then needed to be able to store a lot of stuff and then i wanted to get rid of some of my largest griefs which is to carry my helmet carrying my helmet is really something i hate doing and this is something that I had to do every single time um, because there was no space on a motorcycle to leave it. I mean, I could leave it in the open and I could, uh, you know, lock it with a chain and this kind of stuff. But then, you know, what happens? Uh, people start to do funky things with your helmet, try to steal it, uh, dirt it, um, you know, the whole nine yards. And besides, it is this is possible only when you actually have decent weather, but I am an all year round driver. So for me to leave the helmet in the open when it rains, it was simply a no go. So I wanted to be able to leave my helmet behind. And the helmet fits one helmet, full, full face integral helmet, or a, no, a system helmet fits down there. Uh, let's see if it is open. No, it's closed. Okay, but you saw it in another video. There is plenty of space there. So that was the third one. The fourth one was that I wanted to have something that was fit for my size. Um, motorcycles that are uh, a good fit for somebody like me at 165 are a limited number, um, basically only cruisers. Um, and cruisers are fun, I really love them, and they can be transformed in some kind of transportation vehicle, but they are not just not made for that. So, um, yeah. The other thing I really was really interested in is weather protection. So, because I'm riding all year long, and I'm riding in very nasty conditions sometimes, you know, uh, wind and rain and cold, and particularly cold and rain, I want to have the best um, weather protection I could get. Now, motorcycles and weather protection, very limited. Uh, basically, your legs are more or less always exposed. And, um, and if, you want to, uh, if you want to protect your, your chest from the wind, you need to put a, a screen on it, which is good on some models, it's less good on other models. It's an additional cost anyway. Um, it, it, my experience is that the screen sometimes, particularly a big screen, which I, which I need for weather protection, starts to change the dynamics of the motorcycle as well. So I was not really feeling very happy with that. And a, a motor scooter offers a ton of weather protection. I mean, basically you are, you are protected from uh, the front side almost completely. You have a kind of wall in front of you and uh, that, that really helps a lot. <clears throat> then, comfort. Now, motorcycles are great, but I don't know if you ever noticed, a motor scooter doesn't have pedals. Your, your feet do not need to do anything specific. They don't need to brake, they don't need to shift gear, they don't need to do anything at all. So what is the big advantage of this is that on long rides, I can move my legs. And moving my legs means moving my posture, being able to sit in a slightly different way. So I can put my feet here, I can put my feet here. Um, I can sit here, 
or I can sit all the way back here and I can even move the stuff even further back by my legs are short so it doesn't make any sense but that helps a lot on long rides I mean to feel cramped um, after a long ride on, on max is impossible because I just change slightly my posture I stretch my legs um, or, I, or I sit in a different position and I can go on well I do go on like that for hours and hours without really getting tired so that was that was another reason that uh, eventually led me to decide for a motor scooter versus versus a motorcycle so the weather protection the comfort the storage capabilities the fact that it's automatic all have enormous advantages if you look for a vehicle on two wheels which is a mix of utilitarian uh, cruising, uh, traveling, transportation thing. What a motor scooter is not really made for is to um, sport riding. I mean there are certain motor scooters which are sportive in nature like obviously the T-Max it's a typical example of it uh, but for instance when you are looking at um, scooters which are more sportive then you immediately start to give up a lot of uh, storage space and also the space the, the saddle is, is designed in a slightly different way the um, the space for your legs and feet is is, is different is normally a bit less and and they are very expensive very very expensive i told you at that time how cheap max is is the cheapest option you can have in the motorcycle motor scooter world uh, within this category, the uh, 600 category, 5, 600 category, it's really very, very cheap and it offers a lot of advantages. Now, you cannot really make a track day on a scooter like this. I mean, it's not really designed for it. And um, so if you're looking, really, if you're looking for two wheels for fun, well, probably the scooter is not the right thing for you because the amount of fun you can get out of this is, is limited to the functionality it offers. But if you're looking for anything that is not uh, track days and pure fun, and you're looking for something that is really useful on a daily basis, and I, I can guarantee you I use this stuff really on a daily basis for a lot of things, um, it's great, it's absolutely fantastic. The other thing that I was interested in when, when I was looking at, uh, at vehicles of this, uh, of this kind was easy of maintenance. Now, some brands of motorcycles and motorscooters are famous for making things as complicated as possible. Uh, one of the brands starts with a B and ends with a W. Guess which one is it? I mean, it's, it's really difficult to do anything on those motorcycles by yourself. Um, some other motor scooters, uh, I was, when I was studying the subject, I noticed that you need specialized equipment and then certain things are set in a way which is, uh, you know, uh, very integrated but very difficult to access, very difficult to maintain yourself. I didn't want to have that. I wanted to have something that was um, really easy maintenance, which means cheap. Uh, which means to be free to decide if and when I want to maintain what on my um, on my motor scooter without having to make an appointment and to go to the garage and then to wait and then to pick it up and to pay a lot of money in the process. So with Max I have solved that problem as well. In terms of fuel consumption, it's uh, I think it's comparable. My calculation tells me that it makes um, 20 kilometers with one liter of fuel more or less so it's not the cheapest um, possible motor scooter you can have if you have a 300 or a 400 this uh, is a lot more economical than that but that kind of um, engine size was not was not good for me because I do far too much highway and I, I needed to have something which was having enough power to um, manage in the traffic in the most secure possible way and when you have a 400 
uh, the time it picks up and the time it speeds. Hey, look at this birds. A lot of birds. Nice. So, you know, I want to have some power. Not for fun, but just for safety, basically. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, maintenance. Cosmetics. Well, you know, I'm not really a cosmetic freak. I think Max looks looks okay. Uh, it's, I cannot call it beautiful, but it is not ugly. And um, you know, it has its 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 character. It's not uh, it's not an ugly scooter. I think you know, it's not as fancy as an AK550. Uh, Kimco, or it is not as streamlined as uh, T Max, but it is, um, I think it's decently good looking. Well, we managed. It's practically done. A few drops, and then I will be able to. Then I will be able to close the all things up check everything again, clean up the last bits and pieces, um, and then, of course, since the day is so beautiful, guess what, I'm going for a ride, because once you have made your maintenance, I think it's a good idea to uh, make a test ride, to check everything works, there is something funky to fix it before you actually need you need your uh, your scooter your motorcycle and discover you forgot something or there is something not right going on and then you have to mess around with your schedule and so on so yeah but I'm very happy with this I mean it's uh, it's easy enough it only takes a long time I think uh, this stuff has been dripping for certainly one hour possibly one and a half hour. I didn't check the time when I started. Could have told you. But it takes your time. So if you want to do maintenance and you need to do this job, my recommendation would be to start with this part and then start with the, uh, with the engine oil, which takes a lot less time and effort than doing this. You just fix something like this here, you know, and, uh, and off you go. I might also need to clean Max one day. Beautiful, beautiful motor scooter. Really loving. I would buy another one with no hesitation. No hesitation whatsoever. Perfectly well balanced. Powerful, cheap, easy, comfortable, safe. Look at this. Nothing wrong with this baby at all. Meanwhile, it's become a beautiful day. It's warm, sunny. Fantastic. So I think I will, uh, I will close business here. I will close shop. I, um, I finish my work. So recapping, what we've been doing is to change the engine oil. Uh, we change the oil filter. We change the transmission oil. We change the spark plug. We replace part of the cooling liquid. We fixed a squeaking issue. Ah, uh, yeah, and we um, cleaned up the um, crankcase exhaust. I think more or less that's it. So it was uh, quite, a, quite a work, but 22,500 22, kilometers. Um, Max has been maintained basically only by me all, all this time. And uh, I'm very happy with the, uh, with the ease 
and the economy involved in, in maintaining uh, this motor scooter by myself. It's really, really easy, components are cheap, there is nothing particularly fancy about it, it's, uh, it's normally rather accessible. The spark plug was probably one of the most complicated ones uh, to replace, but next time I think I would be uh, a lot quicker because I know where to put my hands. So it's also a question of experience and practice, as usual. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, leave me a comment I, or questions. Uh, if you need something as an advice, I'll do my best to, uh, to help you out. If you want to put a like, it would be appreciated. If you want to subscribe, please do. And um, I'll see you next time. Bye now.